So today, what we're gonna talk about is the fundamental practice of Ayurveda and for what purpose? For number one purpose, longevity, vitality, and spiritual and mental health. So those are the four purposes of creating a routine in your life according to your body type. And what are we trying to get? Vitality, longevity, spiritual and mental health. Every day, just a little more vitality. Every day, a little bit more foundation for a strong longevity. And every day, feeling spiritual and mental health. That is what the purpose of Ayurvedic medicine was designed for. Now, it does, as I've said in other videos, treat every disease known to man. There are 500,000 practicing Ayurvedic physicians in modern India. There are research hospitals, research magazines, just like the ones in the American Medical Journal. They have them in Ayurveda. They treat, they have Ayurvedic hospitals that they do primarily and only Ayurvedic practices. They treat every disease known to man, cancer, okay? And, and digestive disorders, mental diseases in India today. 262 university hospitals. So it, it's definitely, and there's 6,000 herbs, okay? in what are called um, the database of medicinal plants used in Ayurveda. And this is volume four, and I have all seven of these volumes, okay? And they use these 6,000 herbs, okay? And many other practices on these diseases. And this book was created by the Central Council for Research in Ayurveda and Siddha by the Department of ISMNH, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in New Delhi by the government of India. And so they themselves, the government of India, recognizes these 262 university hospitals and recognizes the fact that Ayurveda treats all 6,000 diseases. And yes, they have a medical profession. Uh, Reiki is very popular in Ayurveda. Um, Homeopathy is very popular in India. Ayurveda is um, actually used by like 8% of uh, the population, but 8% of 1.3 or 4 billion people are a lot of people using Ayurveda daily. And the uh, medical association that was first developed in India by Britain the British Medical Association is used extensively and I've been in those hospitals and it's quite amazing how sophisticated they are. So they're using every kind of medicine. But when you have that much um, widespread use with alternative medicine and uh, medical medicine, then you have really savvy healthcare consumers and that is what is so exciting when I've been to India and watched that operating. And do they have controversy with each other? Of course, wherever there are people, there's always controversy. But otherwise, taking that out of the consideration, it's quite amazing to go to India and see that there's like a specialty of Ayurveda in only cardiology, the Ayurvedic cardiologist, the Ayurvedic rheumatologist, the Ayurvedic dermatologist. And it's um, a really beautiful system. So that is why Ayurveda can claim that its medicine has such a wide breadth. Preventative medicine is at the heart and soul of Ayurveda because basically they are saying that the number one cause of disease is something called Pragya Parad, and to translate that is um, the mistake of the intellect. The number one cause of disease in Ayurveda is known as Pragya Parad, P-R-A-G-Y-A, P-R-A-D-A-H, Pragya Parad. It's translated as the mistake of the intellect. And what that means is, is that all disease is when 
The intellect, the intelligence, and the ego get confused and give the brain incorrect information about vitality, about longevity, about spiritual and mental health, and starts to create a inherent stress in the system. And that, for example, let me say that another way. In Ayurveda, I was taught that Ayurveda teaches that from the moment you're born to the moment you die, your body, mind, is in a struggle to survive because it knows that it's dying. And our intellect, our intelligence, and our ego have to adapt to that inherent stress. And that can be understood in a certain way as pragya parad, the mistake of the intellect. So what is the antidote for pragya parad? Something called smerti, S-M-U-R-T-I. And it is translated as remembering your wholeness, remembering your relaxated relaxation, remembering your comfort and care and nourishment for yourself, remembering that the spark of life in you is the very essence of your experience of feeling good inside. Rupert Spira says that nirvana is resting in the I am. I'll say it again. Nirvana is resting in the I am. What is the I am? Well, when you close your eyes, and just try that right now, when you close your eyes and you feel that life in you, or you just close the eyes and you look out your eyes and all you can see is the black, because your eyes are closed and you just sit with that for a, just five minutes. That is the I am. That is the spark of life within you. Nirvana is resting in the I am. That is the first step to vitality, longevity, spiritual health, and mental health. Now, each body type, according to the principles of Ayurveda, has the same general life recommendations, but more nuanced to their basal metabolic rate, how fast their physiology operates. However, there are 13 body types and there are five elements that combine to make three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. So we're always five elements and we always have some vata, pitta, and kapha, okay? That's just something that you have to understand because what they're talking about is biosystems and they're constantly moving. You never stop. Even when you're asleep, your body is cellularly completing digestion from 10 p.m. to three, in, just as an example, to three in the morning. So I have to put my glasses on here, okay? And so the general lifestyle recommendations and this is scientifically proven now and here this has been written 5,000 years ago okay you have to get enough sleep you have to pay attention to your bowels and elimination and you want to be able to the what they say that's normal in for a daily uh, routine is that you get up at six o'clock in the morning you have a bowel movement and that's your bowel movement for the day. And if you're having three or four or five bowel movements, that's busy bowels. And busy bowels is a sign of your nervous system being overstimulated. Avoid suppressing natural urges, including sneezes, thirst, hunger, cough, yawns, tears, laughter, runny nose, gas, feces, and urine. Ayurveda believes suppression can lead to diseases later on in life. Love, happiness, and clarity in our relationships and everyday life are important for good health and long life. That is the goal of relationships, not being right 
or being wrong, but love, happiness, and charity in our relationships and everyday life are important to good health and long life. Get out in the fresh air and sunlight every day for at least 20 minutes. Those are the general lifestyle recommendations of Ayurveda. If you like this and you liked learning about Ayurveda and you want more, please subscribe, like, and comment. And if you've got a question about anything I said today and you want an elaboration on it, put it in the comments and I'll make a video. All right, have a great day, bye.